Firstly, I would like to thank all of you for checking out the channel. If you enjoy my content and wish to support the channel, consider becoming a patron for exclusive tailor-made content. The link will be in the description box below. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, I will be taking you to 19th century Italy, where Niccolo Paganini would shock the world with his amazing skills with the violin. He was an Italian violinist and composer, and was the most accomplished and celebrated musician of his time. He is also arguably the greatest violinist to ever live, and was considered to be a musical genius. But it was rumoured that he made a deal with the devil, acquiring magical powers that allowed him to master the instrument beyond the reach of anyone else. This is his story. Niccolo was born on October the 27th in 1782 in Genoa, Italy. It is believed that Niccolo's mother had high hopes set on her son becoming a famous musician. This would add fire to a rumour that she had made a deal with the devil herself, exchanging her son's soul so that he could be the best violinist in history. Niccolo's father was a trader, but he also earned an income by playing the mandolin, a stringed instrument of the lute family. Niccolo would start learning how to play the mandolin by the age of five, being instructed by his father. He would later start learning how to play the violin at age seven. Musical talent was quickly recognized, and he would get offers for many musical scholarships with masters of the violin. Niccolo would study under many local violinists, but he would quickly become better than them. He would play the violin in a public performance at the age of 11. It was evident that Niccolo was a child prodigy. The boy travelled to Parma to seek further knowledge from the masters of the instrument, such as Alessandro Roya. However, once Alessandro heard Niccolo play the violin, he immediately referred him to his own teacher. Ferdinando Paier an Italian composer known for his operas, would become Niccolo's new teacher. But once again, he referred him to his own teacher, recognising his brilliance almost immediately. He would now be under the tutorage of Gasparo Giretti. Giretti did have some influence on the boy, inspiring him to develop his own compositional style. At the age of 15, Niccolo would begin playing solo tours, but within a year, he suffered from an emotional breakdown and would succumb to alcoholism. At 15, Niccolo was already a celebrity. He was well known for his antics, such as his gambling, heavy drinking and womanizing. When the French invaded Italy in March of 1796, Niccolo would take a brief break from performances due to his family taking refuge in his father's country property. Niccolo would learn how to play the guitar he would soon completely master the instrument, but preferred to play it in private and in intimate situations. He would later describe the guitar as his greatest companion on his concert tours. By the year 1800, Niccolo travelled to the port city of Livorno on the western coast of Tuscany. Here, Niccolo would resume his concerts. By 1801, Niccolo was now 18 years old and he was appointed as the first violin of the Republic of Lucca, which was amazing for one so young. He was now the most famous musician in the country, and possibly the world. But he wasn't only famous for him being a musical genius, his womanizing, gambling and drinking were also the talk of Italy. In 1805, Niccolo became the violinist for Napoleon's sister Elisa, who was the Grand Duchess of Tuscany, and an imperial French princess. Niccolo would be employed to play the violin for Elisa's court, and would also become the personal tutor for Elisa's husband, giving him private lessons. From humble beginnings, he would now rub shoulders with Europe's elite and be in their personal circle. Niccolo had become part of Elisa's entourage, but in 1809, he would leave to pursue his career as a freelancer once more. Niccolo would now tour around the areas of Parma and Genoa, still living the same lifestyle he was used to, partying with women of the night, gambling and drinking heavily. In 1813, he held a concert at La Scala, an opera house in Milan. Here, he attracted the attention of other prominent musicians. 
he would perform several of his own compositions without a sheet of music, going strictly on memorising the works. As he was free from staring at a sheet of music whilst performing, he would passionately twist his body and dance around the stage. Niccolo also seemed to have quite the aura, being a striking and memorable figure. He was very tall and remarkably thin, with hollow sunken cheeks and very long fingers. He had pale skin, thin lips and flaming eyes. He would also dress in black for all of his performances. During his performances, it was reported that he could play at a remarkable speed of 12 notes per second. He would pioneer what was seen to be possible with the violin at the time. His striking figure and appearance, combined with his lifestyle and musical genius, would cause rumours that he had sold his soul to the devil to be the best musician in the world. His fame would soon spread across Europe and he would begin a concert tour, going to many countries. The tour started in Vienna and stopped at every major European city in Germany, Poland and Bohemia. He would later tour in Paris and Britain, showing all of Europe his musical genius. But as he showed the world his talent, after the shows he would continue his life of depravity. Reports of Niccolo's pact with the devil would also make him even more famous. One concert fan in Vienna claimed he saw the devil helping Niccolo play. The other spectators merely looked at Niccolo and then at the face of the horrified concert fan. They were completely convinced. There were also reports of Niccolo sitting in the crowd at his own concerts. If so, who was he watching play? Niccolo's wild lifestyle would eventually catch up with him, and in 1822, he would be diagnosed with syphilis. He would be prescribed mercury and opium to remedy his illness, but this only caused physical and psychological side effects, including depression. In 1834, he was also diagnosed with tuberculosis, but he did make a recovery. His career would ultimately be cut short due to many health problems, as he would frequently turn down the opportunity to perform. He would later become a violin teacher. Later, in 1836, Niccolo returned to Paris to set up a casino, but this business venture would result in failure and left him broke and bankrupt. Due to this, he had to auction off all of his prized musical instruments. His health would soon take a turn for the worse, and in 1840, he would soon be on his deathbed. A priest would come to his side to perform the last rites, but Niccolo refused them, apparently saying that he wasn't going to die yet, and the rites would have been premature. He would die a week later, without ever receiving his last rites. Due to the rumours of him selling his soul, and the refusal of last rites, the church did not allow his body to be buried on consecrated ground, and with him refusing the last rites, this only sparked more rumours that he made a pact with the devil to be the greatest musician ever. His strange appearance, his lifestyle, the fame in women, and of course the amazing talent, were enough to convince the people. He seemed to have it all, but then lost it all. First his health, then his wealth, until he was virtually left with nothing, as expected from a pact with the devil, until he ultimately takes your soul. That was the belief of many of the common people at the time. Whatever the rumours were, eventually, Pope Gregory XVI allowed his body to be laid to rest in Navilletta Cemetery in Parma, Italy. What are your thoughts on Niccolo Paganini? Did he really sell his soul? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.